floor is yours. All right, thanks, Rai. So welcome everyone to the November 11th TSC call. Um, looks like the folks that we have on the call are all people who've been here before, so you know the drill. Uh, you must conform to the antitrust policy notice as well as the uh, code of conduct, which is linked into the agenda. Um, so we have some announcements to start us off. Um, as always, the Dev Weekly newsletter goes out each Friday. So if you have anything that you'd like to report about your project or your lab or the work that you're doing um, and reach a, a technical developer audience, this is a, a means to do that. Um, the second item I put here is as I was going through and looking at kind of what's upcoming for reports, I noticed that uh, the 25th is coming, which is the US Thanksgiving. So I'm recommending that we go ahead and cancel that particular meeting. Hopefully nobody on the call has any issues with that. Okay. Um, and then uh, the next one here, I noticed uh, right before the call that Min had sent an email to the TSC mailing list about uh, the Minty project presentations that are happening on November 15th and November 17th. So there's actually two separate presentation calls where you can uh, hear about kind of the different projects that happen during the, the mentorship program uh, this past year. So if you have time and are interested, uh, please consider attending that particular item. And then Rai, I think you added this last one. I did, and uh, I just wanted to point out that the uh, the conference, the uh, HBCU Blockchain and FinTech Conference uh, hosted by Morgan State is free tomorrow and, and uh, Saturday. Uh, link is in the description. Hyperledger will be there. Uh, you know, feel free to, to join us and uh, it, it's going to be a good time. All right, thanks, Ray. Any other announcements that anybody has like to add? Okay, so we did get three reports that came in this week, uh, one for Aries, one for Indian, one for Iroha. Um, I noticed at least an hour ago when I checked, uh, there weren't many folks who had had a chance to review any of them yet. I think the, the one that had the most was about four people out of the 15 who had a chance to review it. Um, so I'm asking that you go forward and review those. Um, I did notice that there was a question in, I think it was the Indie one. Uh, Arno, you had asked a question specifically about um, the Indie DID. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's not so much a question to about the project itself as much as the choices they're making on the specification. I mean, but you know, I wouldn't hold it against them as just, I'm curious, the whole idea, you know, was to be decentralized and have identifiers that are in full control of the user. And in their spec, they provide a mechanism that depends on GitHub. <laughs> and I'm like, doesn't that defeat the point? If you are now depending on GitHub being there, uh, it seems a bit odd to me, but. So I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm still interested to hear from the indie crowd, you know, what they think about it. But sure. So Nathan, I see you have your hand up. Is that related to um, maybe this? Yeah. Uh, just as a kind of a, the note there is that it's meant as a source of documentation of what our methods are out there to go investigate. Um, the authority in terms of what methods your code supports comes from the implementation that you have. The idea being that your your code should support as many of, of the implementations as it can. Um, and that's kind of one of the, the impetuses of splitting Aries out from Indy originally was to make it so Aries was generic and could support more than one decentralized method. The trouble we always have saying, well, where's the decentralized specification for the decentralized spec is which form of decentralization is the most decentralized or the right kind of decentralized, which creates all sorts of you know contortions and knots yes. in, the in the debate. So. Um, if you're interested in that debate, uh, the, the Decentralized Identity Foundation, which is also hosted at the Linux Foundation, is where most of that debate has occurred. 
And uh, that's also why the GitHub repository that specifies method specs is hosted over there is because that's where everyone argues about it. Yeah, I suspected that would be pointed there, but uh, thanks for a little bit of the background. And I understand the challenges. It's not an easy problem to solve, but. All right, um, I did not see, well, the, I only saw one other question, but I think that was um, more related to connecting David Boswell with people who were working on the climate um, work in Aries to get them connected to the climate, uh, the climate sig that we have. So, um, and I know Stephen's not here to answer that question. So we'll hope that he answers that specifically in the, um, the report itself. Are there other questions that people had about any of the reports? Arun? Hey, um, there was a question last week by Dano to follow up from Avalon and I did reach out to Eugene from Intel and um, he is unfortunately occupied, preoccupied for the next three weeks until the Thanksgiving in US. And he said he will join us uh, call soon after that. And he said he has a proposal for uh, what comes into Hyperledger versus what goes into uh, CCC. Okay, great. Well, thanks for following up and letting us know, Arun. We'll look forward to getting him on the agenda uh, when he's ready after Thanksgiving. And I did, uh, there was a question that came in via email and I see that Sarah from Aroha is here. She pointed out that uh, you know, coincidentally, a lot of the documentation about how to do security things is out of date. And I've added some of that to the, uh, to the thing. So Sarah, if you had anything else that you wanted to say about that, it'd be great. Hi, no, it's just a question that uh, appeared a bit later and not really related to the report. I think it was about indeed the security documentation as we have like two kind of teams right now working on two versions of Roja, and one of the teams that is actually not like, the Roja 2 is not released, and uh, they were looking at the repository structure and the documentation that's supposed to be there. They just saw this, and yeah, we decided that we will make um, the document, as you suggested, on GitHub, uh, like just a document and host it on GitHub and just provide the link to it, and hopefully it will be okay. So it's not a question anymore. Thank you for your help. Now we know what to do about this. So, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Other questions or comments regarding the, the reports? I'm going, to, I'm going to leave these reports on here until next week, given the, the small number of people who had a chance to review. But, um, you know, if there are questions now, happy to talk through those. Okay, I see no hands, so I'm going to assume no questions now. Um, so let's move into the discussion section. Um, so last week we had talked about the uh, white paper task force that was suggested uh, to create a white paper regarding the role of blockchain in the election process. Uh, as we talked about that last week, we decided um, that there were um, some objections to that being a official white paper from Hyperledger. I did comment in the issue itself, uh, the fact that we discussed it and that was our outcome, but I didn't want to close this issue without having a discussion with the rest of the TSC to see kind of next steps uh, since we had only really talked about making sure that we commented back on the particular issue. So um, Arun, Oh, thanks, Tracy. Um, last week, I couldn't speak because we were waiting on that proposal as well towards the end. And uh, quick updates on this proposal, right? So I guess I agree to the wording that we may not call it a white paper. However, the interest came in from uh, some of the community members, especially who are involved with the government projects. And they had a request to uh, showcase some of the use cases that they have built and record it somewhere saying that what worked for them versus what did not work well in their POC. And these are some of the institutes that, uh, that are uh, centrally um, governed through the union government in India, as well as um, 
they, they are involved with election commission of India. So um, the, the, some of the members that you see on the list over here, they do uh, come from those departments, right? Uh, the government agencies. So uh, after this call, I guess David suggested me to get in touch with public sector's uh, special interest group. And I did reach out to Jim Mason from public sector SIG. And after speaking to him, looks like he also has some of, the, uh, I mean, he knows few of the people who have built uh, solutions on similar to this. And he expressed interest in um, getting together people or maybe asking people to share more information on such projects. So having seen this interest in, in community over here first, with also the interest that Jim has shown, I would propose that we probably move this proposal uh, to public sector say, and let them figure out what should be the next steps. And so, so I, I agree that we may not be able to call this a white paper, given all the um, discussions that we had last week. But instead of closing it, how about the resolution could be that we move it uh, for now? Close. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a good point with the public sector uh, SIG. I think they're obviously a good place to have a discussion um, where, whereby it might be more around use case documentation rather than uh, white paper, as you mentioned. Uh, I guess, you know, we would probably still close the issue here on the TSC side, um, but yet the, the public sector SIG could take that up. Nathan, I see you have your hand up as well. Well, and I think the thing we want to emphasize is this is good work. I mean, it's something someone needs to figure out. And we shouldn't presume that conclusions will be bad conclusions without the work happening. And, and getting the work to happen is more likely to get us where we want to go. So um, whether it's a white paper or not, and wherever the work occurs, I think it definitely has a home here at Hyperledger. And we definitely want this kind of thinking to happen. Um, so it's just... It feels like we may be getting too involved in the details at too early of a, of a stage um, in terms of what things are labeled, um, if that's going to discourage the work from occurring. Um, but I think uh, whether we call it a white paper, whether we call it, you know, kind of a uh, an exploration or a case study, um, there's a lot of labels we could put on it. I think most of that depends on the outcome of the work, not whether or not we're going to get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely agree, Nathan. Jim. Yeah, I just want to second what Arun and Nathan were saying. Uh, when I reacted to this proposal uh, on the last week's call, my reaction was we just need to find the, the proper expertise that can give this work the, um, uh, the, the, um, the attention it deserves. I do think this is really good work that the community uh, started uh, organically. We should make sure that we can connect them with the right expertise we have. It sounds like the public sector SIG seems to be the, the most prop, the profit home for this for now. So I agree we should uh, suggest that they, they go uh, talk to them. Okay. Hart? So yeah, I, I think I agree with pretty much everything uh, Nathan and Jim said. And I guess this is another question of we really want people to be able to do this work and we want sort of the organization of Hyperledger to be able to help, but we may not want to like make it an official white paper or something like that. Um, I can think of another of sort of uh, some other efforts sort of like this that, you know, people just haven't proposed to the TSC and are sort of doing. Um, but maybe if there's a, a framework to, to do this kind of thing in the future, um, it might spur things like more cross project uh, collaboration and stuff like that. And is there, is there something that we need to take from that heart? Uh, you mentioned a framework. Is there something that we should be putting together as the TSC? Well, I don't know what we want to do. Um, but I mean, I think like we should definitely, uh, you know, give these groups like, you know, if they want to have a meeting, great. If they want to have like a wiki page, great. Um, 
even if you know we don't want to officially endorse things uh you know if we don't want this like is this the official white paper you know kind of thing yeah 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 no i don't think we're i don't think we're trying to dissuade these folks from using hyperledger means to to communicate and to um to start the process of, of writing down their thoughts on this particular topic in any way shape or form so um i think my question here really is more around process since this was a this is a decision log entry um you know what do we do with this decision log entry do we leave it on uh, or do we close it now that it's it's got an official home in the the public sector uh, sig you know it's unfortunately uh, process is something that we have to deal with and tracy can i make one observation sure I, mean, I think this is an interesting point about how, how Hyperledger has grown to a scale where it's just really big. And I think we can start thinking of the community as a large community versus what it had been when I joined four years ago, which is a small one. You know, when I joined, there was only one SIG, we didn't even call it SIGs at the time, but only one group focused on, you know, applying Hyperledger in the industry. There were only a handful of projects. It was knowable in a way where I think we've grown out of, you know, and, and Arun, correct me if I'm wrong, but part of the issue here as I understand it, is the people interested in this paper didn't even know that the public sector SIG existed. So I think we need to think about what does it mean for Hyperledger to be a large community? How do we make things more discoverable? And how do we do things like what Hart is talking about, you know, on the TSC list about how do we try to, you know, intentionally create more threads across these different parts? You know, you've probably heard me say this, but, you know, they're, they're, are at least 70 different activities going on in the community if you add up all the projects, all the labs, all the SIGs, all the working groups. You know, it, it's just to put all the onus on somebody to have visibility into all 70 of those things to understand the right home for the thing they want to do. It's just a really high burden to put on people. So I think this is just an example of where people got stuck because they didn't know everything that was happening and just didn't know where to go. Okay, good point. Um, some things that we then need to take forward as uh, as a community, a larger community. Jim? Yeah, I feel like TSC is sort of becoming a uh, um, obvious front door for people that's in that situation. They've got a good idea. They've got, they've done some good work that want to be contributed to Hyperledger and they don't know where this work belongs. So they you naturally go to TSC looking for uh, advices. I wonder if that's some there's some practical things we can do here. For example, for the for the issues to create a template, um, listing the things that a work could be targeted to. You know, it'll be a list of existing projects, existing six, and um, if it doesn't belong to any of them, then you know, write it out. So uh, that's a way to to guide uh, future um, proposals to, to some existing uh, groups that have uh, relevant expertise. Yeah, good point, Jim. Um, we definitely should have a template for these issues that we've moved kind of the decision log over to. Uh, we did have really a template when, we, when it came to the decision log, uh, but we don't have a template when it comes to just creating an issue here. So uh good good kind of next step that we can take all right so uh again i'll ask the question uh do we have a problem with closing this issue since it already has a home oh that sounds like the right thing to do and just put a note saying this is where it's going yep okay do we need to vote on this just do a quick one saying anybody objects like you just did and i think that's good enough it's not really controversial okay all right so uh does, does anybody object then uh formally to this uh being closed with a note that says it's going to be uh, taken on in the public sector sake All right, I'm taking silence as everybody agrees that's the direction that we're going to head. 
All right, so our next item then on the list is the, the chat system and moving the TSC chat back to um, to Rocket Chat. So we we uh, went through this very quickly last week. It uh, looks like, Rai, you did open up the TSC chat in Rocket Chat again for us to be able to comment on. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that we were officially moving back uh, to, to Rocket Chat and to see if there was any sort of discussion that anybody wanted to have on that particular topic. Um, Grace isn't here, is she? I'm here, sorry. Oh, oh, you're here, okay. One question didn't you have about what we promote? Is it chat, rocket chat? Um, because we're kicking the tires and the basic contributors on the Discord room. We wanted to know what, you know, what the TSC expected as far as how long we can do the split brain thing before we have to commit to one, so. Comments from anyone? So, so the, the, the question that you have, Dano, is around uh, since now everything is officially back to Rocket Chat, but we're also uh, kicking the tires on Discord, what the plan is and how do we make sure that people are going to places that they need to go? Is that correct? Yeah. And what's the time frame for, for moves, for the firm decision on moves about that? What, yeah. what it might be. Right. Do you have any um, ideas on kind of from the Linux Foundation standpoint, what the official uh, stance is on the different chat systems that exist? I am not going to say anything officially, but uh, my position has changed over the last little while. My personal position is that we should go to where the communities are and want to be because telling them that they need to meet us on our terms where we want them to be has not proven to be particularly fruitful. All right, Dano. And just one thing I wanna point out, what a community member who's not a maintainer, interestingly said, you know, hey, there's a lot more chat going on in this discord about hyperledger base suit, maybe we should all move there. So I think there is some community desire to get some presence on discord. And um, we've been working, you know, there's, great permissions on the Hyperledger uh, Discord. And one of the cool things that there is, there's a thing called an announcement channel where you can post releases and other servers could subscribe to it. So it still has some networking effect because you know almost all of the Ethereum space um, chat service have all migrated to Discord eventually, which I think was kind of interesting. They all got off of Gitter, they all got into their matrix servers and they're all on Discord now. Great. Yeah, I think the, the, the point from Dano, I mean, is the base team would be ecstatic if we moved to Discord and are willing to help in any way we can, right? Just to be like, if there's any integration work to who or whatever is needed. I don't, I know others may not want that, but just, yeah, that it, it would be a huge win for base two is the point um, if we did decide that. Understand there are many other projects that need to be considered. Um, but yes, but happy, happy, happy to help. We've been talking about this, um, uh, about how we would be just, you know, any any work that needs to be done, we, we would be happy to put the move behind. I, I appreciate that. And I think in, I implicit in what I said, but I guess not explicit was, uh, if only Bezu and Cactus end up moving over there to, to Discord, and that's where the community wants to be, I think that's a good thing that that we're there. We have an official presence, and people can know that when they search for Hyperledger on Discord, they find, you know, us. Peter, I just wanted to offer some more anecdotal evidence of Discord being uh, a popular choice among the community. I heard from people that they know a lot about the features it has. They know a lot about what it can do and they would love to have it. And uh, they were very happy as well to hear that uh, the current beta or tryout Discord was created. Okay, thanks. Hey, um, so 
I just wanted to re bring the topic that the, um, Rai just spoke about, right? So, from so I agree to what the, the, the uh, scope that he's speaking about. So we we are literally talking about different aspects of, of uh, community getting together. So on one side we are saying, hey, here is how different maintainers get together and then they discuss about a feature on one chart forum. This is where we need probably more interactions, a kind of a discussion forum, have that uh, continuous chart or something like that, right? So Rocket Chart was serving that purpose. And then on the other side, we have somebody who wants to get started with a project and they are looking for resources to get started with it. And right now we are asking them to move to our channels. And I agree that um, forcing somebody to start using our means of communication could not be may not uh, be a nicer way of welcoming somebody. Um, so how about we segregate these? And it, I think having a Discord uh, server for Hyperledger is fine, but what's a, what, what is the purpose that we are trying to solve over there? Are we saying that all the questions should be raised over there? Or are we just saying, hey, this is one of the many means that we have? Yeah, I, I think I think we're causing a lot of confusion is, is where we're at right now, right? Uh, we have Rocket Chat, we've had Rocket Chat for a while, um, you know, a very long time. And we've got now, we created the, the chat on matrix slash element, uh, we went over there. And now we're, we're creating Discord and uh, people are going over there. And we've got, we truly do have a split brain around where do people go? Where should they go? Um, I wanted to reach out to Dano this week and I didn't know where to reach out to him on, uh, you know, it's like uh, I went to the Rocket Chat because last week we said we were going to be moving the TSC back to Rocket Chat and Dano wasn't on Rocket Chat. So I'm like, okay. Maybe he's still on Element. I can find him there, right? Um, and uh, I did find him there, right? But obviously, if I'm having the problem of knowing where to go to reach out to somebody in the community, then somebody new to the community is not going to know where to go. For example, on Discord, there was somebody who reached out about a fabric question. There's nobody that I know of fabric-wise that's on Discord right now. Um, and so I had to send them back to Rocket Chat. So I, I think that we need to do uh, a much better job in making a decision about the direction that we're going to head and um, heading that direction, right? And I, I think just having somebody who's in the community who wants to be involved in uh, Besu or Cactus, but also wants to be involved in uh, one of our other projects that's still on Rocket Chat is going to be a problem for them, right? Because they're going to go to one place, they're gonna sign in uh, with their ID and the community is not gonna be there to answer their questions because they're gonna be off on uh, the other chat platform. So I, I think that we need to uh, potentially take a step back and have a discussion about what is the direction that the entire community wants to head um, instead of here's one community that wants to head over here and here's another community that wants to head over there. Uh, completely my um, opinion, so I'm going to uh, let Hart speak up as well. So Tracy, uh, I agree with you totally. I think the fewer, I, I'm going to summarize what I think you said, and you're welcome to tell me I'm just getting it totally wrong. Um, but I think the fewer platforms we have in general and the less, uh, less ambiguity about where to ask a question or message someone would be great. You know, that that helps a lot of things. Um, I also think an advantage uh, of using something like Discord is that, uh, if I recall correctly, Rocket Chat requires you to have an LFID, and that's you know a sort of a barrier to to asking a question. Where if I want to ask like a casual question, I have to sign up for everything. Whereas you know for Discord or or something else like that, it might be a lot easier, and there might be a much lower barrier to asking a first question. Yep. All right, Dano. So I am on Rocket Chat. Um, I don't know why I didn't show up in the directory. I have all three of them opened up and running all the time. But I think if there is a policy towards this, what I would want to go towards is to let each project pick one and only one chat platform. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to move force fabric off of Rocket Jet because we've got a nice entrenched ecosystem. There are people working on it. On the same hand, um, basically being on Rocket Chat is a barrier for us to communicate with the wider Ethereum ecosystem. Because as Hart mentioned, they see, you know, we're going to create another, you know, login. Everyone in Ethereum land has a Discord login and they're not going to want to make one more login. So it's being on Rocket Chat instead of Discord um, hurts us with our communications to the broader ecosystem. So if, if that uh, proposal were in place that, you know, we could choose each project would choose one and only one chat platform, I think we would choose Discord. And I would expect right now Fabric would choose Rocket Chat to continue with that because that's where they have all their bases. And we would just need to put in, you know, a lock channel that says Fabric questions go here. And the same thing in the basic channel in Rocket Chat. Hey, we've all moved to Discord. Here's the invite. Yeah, and Dano, it wasn't that you weren't there. It was that you weren't listed as being online at the time. So um, I did find you there. Uh, so no, no problem there. Um, I, I think that the bigger question is, are we one large community or are we separate communities is, is where we're really at at this point when we talk about, you know, uh, having people who need to be logged into Rocket Chat versus people who need to be logged into Discord versus people who need to be logged into, you know, pick your favorite chat platform, um, which unfortunately I, ha I think I have five separate chat platforms running on my machine right now, um, which is, uh, you know, a big challenge for me individually, right? So, um, in the, in the past, uh, historically, right, we have been one large Hyperledger community, um, and that's why we all exist on the same chat platform. So I think it really does boil down to a discussion of, is that uh, what we want to remain, or is are we changing historically what we've done in the past? So Bobby? Okay, um, I spend a lot of time on Discord, and I think that a lot of people are on Discord, so you can't deny that fact. Um, there's a way to set up a channel and have subgroups under that channel. And if a particular project wants to direct their fan base, so to speak, to the chat or to the uh, communication channel they want, they could just list it right there and direct people correctly. But people are on Discord, so you know, it's easy to just set up a presence. I will admit until a month ago, I had no Discord um, account. So uh, I guess I'm behind the times, if you will. Um, I, I, I don't think this is a question of, should we use Discord? I think this is a question of, should we get rid of Rocket Chat in favor of Discord for all of our projects? Or uh, what is the plan, right? Um, because that that really boils down to a tools question. I, I do have, I, I, my virtual hand is up. Um, this discussion really got kicked off. Um, this is an acknowledgement of, of the current state of where we are. Uh, this, this, uh, our Chinese communities are not on Rocket Chat or Discord. And Julian uh, Gordon, our APAC VP, was brought that up. It's like all of the stuff for Hyperledger APAC happens on, you know, WeChat and a lot of it happens on Telegram. So we already have, this is, this is already an issue. It's just an unacknowledged one previously. Well, yes, it has been an issue uh, for a while. It's why uh, Sorabot exists, right? Um, in the Aroha channel. Ah, uh, yeah, we have a bot. Um, unfortunately, it requires some maintenance and sometimes it brings some issues, but overall it works and uh, it allows to communicate in Gitter, uh, Rocket Chat, and Telegram. Yeah. And brings spam from Telegram to Rocket Chat, which is horrible <laughs> and requires manual deletion. So. So from, from what I can hear, there are certain communities who want to move to a different chat channel or a different chat system. Um, there are other communities who haven't spoken up 
um, either because they're not represented here or because they don't have an opinion or they don't want to speak up. Um, but I, I really do feel like we're, we're reaching a point where we're um, going to make a decision about the direction of Hyperledger as a larger community that really needs to have some, some deep thought done to that. So I guess this is not a closed discussion. I don't see anybody else wanting to speak up at this point. Um, I do think this is going to continue to be a, an ongoing discussion until we figure out tooling or until we figure out um, what we want to do going forward. So I now see two hands up. Jim, you were first. Yeah, sorry, JC. Uh, hopefully a quick question from me. Uh, was there a sort of a mandate to save on cost by consolidating on the single one? Uh, I think this was brought up uh, earlier. Uh, Besu is, it has its uh, a, a big following on and Cactus on Discord and Fabric has everything on Rocket Chat. Uh, is there an option to do both at the same time or three uh, if there's another significant following somewhere else like WeChat? I, um, I'll speak I to the historical reason about why we are where we are. We started out on Slack and it would have, and we couldn't keep any of the messages longer than about a week. And it would have cost tens of thousands of dollars a month to keep Slack going. Rocket Chat was the supported open source chat platform that was available to us at LF. So we jumped over to Rocket Chat. And well, some of us jumped over to Rocket Chat. So that's, it wasn't necessarily a, a cost saving, but a cost avoidance. You know, we didn't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars a month on Slack. Thanks, Ray. Arno? Now, just quickly, I wanted to say, I hope we can, you know, think hard about what we want to do before we do anything more, because it's starting to feel schizophrenic when, you know, mm -hmm. we say, oh, let's move there. Oh, no, maybe not. And, you know, we're all over the place. That's not good. Yeah, I, th I think this really requires us to spend some time thinking about what our requirements are and finding, you know, the pros and cons of the different sorts of solutions and, and really documenting those as a decision criteria and entry points and into, you know, what we're going to do here. Um, yep. I think that's the, the right step forward. Uh, Peter. Quick question based on what Rai said. Are we going to have the same cost problem with Discord that Slack was posing, or is it a different pricing structure? I I was looking at it. I think we can enable every feature possible on Discord for like less than five hundred dollars a month, and. That's only if people really insist on that. All you get from that is like custom emojis and custom reactions and a bunch of stuff like that. There's nothing functional um, that I saw. I could be wrong, but I, I don't believe that to be the case. Okay. That sounds a lot better than tens of thousands of dollars. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Grace. I know by saying this, I'm volunteering myself, um, but is this a good candidate for a task force um, and have a subset of us make a, you know, analyze kind of the different channels, costs, and um, make a recommendation to the group? I think that makes a lot of sense, Grace. Yeah. And I thank you for volunteering. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's uh, uh, other folks who are interested in that discussion and getting involved in a task force, um, let's have you reach out to Grace and we'll get that task force started. I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. All right, uh, so let's let's move on uh, to the DCI working group inclusive naming naming proposal. Um, so Grace, I think you and the team uh, have come up with some specific items that are um, 
in addition to the recommendations that you had presented to us before, the uh, steps that we would take to, to kind of implement those recommendations. So uh, did you want to talk about kind of what you guys have done and, and then maybe we'll have a discussion on that? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure we were 100% ready for prime time, but that's okay. <laughs> um, the so yes, we made a few recommendations for um, how we can implement the process. So last time when we came to you all, um, we um, made you know these kind of I guess three or four recommendations. Sorry, I'm pulling up myself uh, around just how you know Hyperledger can be more inclusive with its language. And so we had some proposals here. Uh, one of which was the um, a way to implement what, implement it was through the DCI Lint tool, which Peter was nice enough to. Uh, put together. Um, and yeah, so the next step came coming out of that, we didn't get really any uh, negative feedback or on, on, on the recommendations, but we did get feedback on the process. So what we did was um, come up with, if you scroll down, if you don't mind, you have, I think Raj sharing a screen <laughs> or somebody. Um, so you can see the recommendations here in inclusive language for each of the group, uh, each of the teams. And then if you go down to the implementation proposal, just to pick up where we left off, Um, we made kind of a few recommendations on how to implement this in the community because, you know, that was kind of the, the, the key questions from the group. So the first one was, you know, to um, have the DCI working group present at a, a maintainer onboarding meeting um, these DCI recommendations to hopefully train and inform the community on these best practices. That way, you know, we don't just send a mandate over the fence and say, do it, you know, but instead say, hey, let's let's talk about this, why we decided to make these recommendations and, and how they can be easily implemented in your, in your, in your project. Um, the second is adding uh, to the quarterly report, report template a question if, if your project has implemented the DCI Linter tool. Um, and then the third is, um, and then included in that, which uh, Peter's next time to do is just some instructions on how to, how to implement the DCI Linter tool, so that makes it easier. And then the third recommendation is just to add another question to the quarterly report template of have you included an inclusive language statement in your project's documentation and or wiki pages. Um, um, so yeah, so this is kind of the three things we thought we could do to make it easier on the community to implement and also, you know, a good education opportunity too. All right, thanks Grace. So you mentioned that you weren't quite ready for prime time. Is that because you are still seeing comments coming in on this page? Is that because you uh, were thinking that there would be additional implementation um, options or, or what was the thinking behind that? We were waiting for some, just the instructions to be added, I believe. Um, and I believe, um, and, and we were going to review these just to, to finalize in the uh, DCI working group tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, right. So the group has seen it, um, but we and the proposal has been shared on the mailing list, but I had not gotten uh, the broader approval just yet. Sorry about that. Okay. No, that's that's fine, Grace. I, I think you know uh, this could be a good opportunity for the TSC to to pre weigh in before that DTI working group to see if there's anything that um, you know jumps out at them. Um, so Hart, uh, you have your hand up. Yeah. Thanks for putting this together, Grace. Um, I guess the the question from the TSC end is what do we what you know what are the steps are we requiring this are we recommending this are we suggesting that people run the linter tool does the linter tool have to pass I guess the um, the question I have is is how light or heavy handed do we want to be with sort of uh, this proposal and, and what people are, are supposed to do with this tool. All right, thanks Hart. Uh, Arno? Yeah, so in fact, if you look in the comments below, there was a little bit of an exchange between Dan and I. Uh, you know, we were talking about, I mean, Dan made the point that we probably should soften the requirement is the first one there on the page. You know, we went through this with the repo, common repo structure, right? Where initially we said, well, you must use repo linter. 
and eventually we figured, well, that's a bit harsh and doesn't always work. So we we settled on saying you need to implement this, and you know, one way is to use Ripple Inter, and maybe we should adopt a similar policy here where the requirement is not have you implemented DC Lint, but DCI Lint, but you know, have you implemented the DCI, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call this, the guidelines, and you know, leave it at, at leave it to the to each project to decide how they go at it. I think it's good to point out DCI Lint is there and they can leverage it, but we don't have to make that the requirement. Okay, Grace. Yeah, just to respond to Hart and I know I, I agree the tool is not a requirement um, or that, you know, it's just trying to, a way to make it easier you know, if, if projects choose. Um, but the, you know, the real message is, you know, just in, including inclusive language in there. And yes. the, the tool itself is just a way to accomplish that if they so choose. Yeah, but so the, the proposal doesn't make it sound like that, right? If That's we right. put in the quarterly report the question, you know, have you implemented the DCI Linter tool? That's like yes or no. <laughs> I mean, maybe you could say, you know, have you implemented uh, the DCI recommendation, you know, possibly using the DCI Linter tool? I would do it. Yeah, that's a, yeah. So maybe in changing that second one to has your project implemented um, these recommended language changes, particularly right. the map remain slave replicas. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. You're right. Uh, I can edit on the fly if that's helpful. No problem. Uh, Hart? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, the big worry is that, you know, um, there are things like false positives or something that, you know, drive developers crazy. You know, some some project probably has the word Jedi Master in their code base. Uh, is is that okay? I mean, um, you know, it, it, it's just stuff like that that might, uh, you know, might end up, uh, I, I guess, causing extra work for developers. Okay. Um the the comment that I had on the uh the implementation proposal uh was just around getting the word out, which I think is a, a standard challenge that we have, uh the TSC communicating to the different communities, different projects, different maintainers. Um, you know, I, I see the recommendation is to use the maintainers um meeting that that exists. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that's going to reach everyone. Uh, it seems like there's, you know, people who don't have the opportunity to attend that call, um, and, and that sort of thing. So I would just, you know, ask that the, the DCI working group think about other opportunities to be diverse in the way in which we communicate this, uh, to, to people, right. Um, be it a, a recorded video with, um, uh, closed captions, right? Uh, be it something that thinks about kind of the sort of translation that might need, be needed in order to properly communicate this to non-English speakers, right? I, I think there's there's a lot of things that we can think about uh, that would not require somebody to be available at you know 8 a.m. Pacific on a Thursday morning, right? When when they might actually be sleeping. Uh, so, so just thinking through kind of the process by which we get the word out about the sort of DCI engagement that we would like to have from the, the different projects, the different maintainers. Yeah, good point. Um, definitely the dev newsletter makes sense as a um, one option. Um, but yeah, no, I'll take that back to the group too and just make sure we're, we're covering our bases there. That's great feedback. And, I like what you did there with your diverse <laughs> avenues <laughs> of yeah. communication. No problem. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Grace. Hart? So yeah, and I think all this sounds great. And I think like adding, you know, a, a line to the quarterly report, like, you know, are you following inclusive language guidelines is, is a great idea. 
Um, out of curiosity, uh, does anyone know if we have had any problems with these? Um, you know, maybe I'm just naive and, and, you know, not following closely enough, but I, I haven't really seen any of these, uh, you know, once we've sort of done the master domain switch, I haven't really seen a lot of this uh, language in Hyperledger. I don't know the answer to that heart. Um, if somebody does, please raise their hand and we'll let Peter speak and um, maybe somebody can answer Hart's, Hart's question. Peter? Yeah, I also don't know the answer to that question, but what I was gonna say is that thanks for the feedback because uh, the tool does have a, a git ignore syntax like ignore file that you can put in the repo and then it will just uh, skip over certain things, which probably Jedi Master would be a good candidate of. But uh, also what I've noticed when I put DCI Lint in action on Cactus is that there's a uh, configuration files of third party dependencies that will not allow you to, to remove certain phrases because their configuration schema is fixed and uh, that's just how they are and they haven't updated it yet or maybe they don't want to, I don't know. And so for those occasions when it's not really your decision, there's a way to configure it. And I my, my realization just now is that this should be also mentioned somewhere front and center on the guide. So I will incorporate that as well to make sure that when people look at this, this includes their first impression, this information. Okay, great. Thanks, Peter. Dano? Um, I think it's not that we have, don't have, I don't think we really have an issue with it. It's just that we need to be mindful of it. There are a couple more examples coming in from Ethereum that I think are worth pointing out. We used to have in Besu whitelists and blacklists. We don't have allow lists and deny lists. Uh, there used to be an opcode called suicide that was changed to self-destruct. And um, there is something in the consensus mechanism for uh, blocks that are being, um, they used to be called uncle blocks and now they're being called Omer blocks, which is the gender neutral aunt uncle. So there's, you know, it's just littered about that we're starting to do it. And I think the value of this is just to remind us to be mindful of it. When you see an opportunity, you should take it. Yep, completely agree, Dana. Okay, um, any more comments on, on the proposal that Grace and Peter and folks can take back to uh, the DCI working group tomorrow. All right, well, there was one other thing uh, that Rai, I think you added to the agenda last minute here. I don't know that we have time to cover it, but uh, if you wanna give a high level so that we can um, make sure that we talk about this next week. Sure thing. Um... This is the homework that Arno gave to me months ago, and uh, I was spurred to, by Sarah's question from Aroha to take an even deeper look. These are what I recommend. You know, I have a series of four what I think are lightweight recommendations. Um, so I please take a look at these and Give me some feedback as to whether or not you want to do any of this. Um, it would basically replace all of our current disparate ways of handling security stuff with a, a more direct way of send an email or go to hacker one. Okay. So we'll definitely include this one on uh, next week's agenda. So um, make sure that you take the time to review the uh, proposal that Rai has put out here for us to um, provide feedback on. And we will uh, continue that discussion next week. Uh, in the remaining two minutes, is there anything that anybody wants to bring up? All right, so we will then uh, see you all next week and have a great week up ahead.
Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, thank you, Tracy.